Malok, you know? Kellogg, what? Sounds just like the same thing. Free. So whenever you write a program, you use memory to actually perform the operations and store data. We don't have an infinite amount of memory. So it is pretty useful to free up some memory when we are done using things. And this is exactly what Malloc and Kellogg does. Let's say we have a program that allows users to type in a list of all the children they have in their basement. We don't know how big the list is going to be, so we can ask the user to specify before how many numbers they are going to put in the list. Then we can use Malloc to allocate a block of memory that contains exactly how much memory the user is going to type in. We then get a pointer to the first address of the block and we can start working. Okay, but what is Kellogg then? Hello, what is Kellogg? I want to know what Kellogg is. Hello? Yes, 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 I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Kellogg is more or less the same thing as Malloc. They serve pretty much exactly. What? The thing that makes Kellogg different is that it sets all the allocated bytes to zero. It makes the block of memory completely empty, so if you try to access an unspecified value in the block of data, it will just read zero. However, if you did the same thing with malloc, it would read some weird unpredictable value as it hasn't been overwritten yet. There's also a difference in the syntax between the two. With malloc, you used to have to specify the exact amount of memory that you want to allocate. So if you wanted to have enough spaces for 10 integers, you would write it like this. You just take the amount of bytes an integer takes up on your computer and times that by the amount of integers you want. With calloc on the other hand, you would specify how many things you want and then the size of them. This is pretty much the exact same thing, but instead of multiplying on your own, you send in two values to the function. Now, what is the free function in C? The free function takes a pointer as a parameter and deallocates the memory that is at the address of it. Let's take the list of the children in the basement from the floor. If the user suddenly decided to release all the children from the basement, he would want to clear the list, keeping track of them, so to stop wasting memory. He does this by typing in free and giving the name of the pointer as an argument. But how does the free function know when the block actually ends? I mean, we only give it the first address of it, since it is what the pointer is pointing to. It knows this because whenever we allocate memory in the system, it actually allocates more than what we asked for. In the extra bytes, it allocates information like the size of the block stored, and this is what the free function uses. I hope this video helps subscribe, you whenever you want subscribe, to give a subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.